Hello, it's Ruby, and as you can tell from the title of the video, today I am going to be doing a Q&A. I am pretty sure it's been... has it been maybe a year since I've done a Q&A? It's been a long time since I filmed one, and people have been asking me to do another one, even though I really don't think that there are any particularly urgent or, like, pressing questions, but... Anyway, I asked on Instagram, and so I'm going to be scrolling through and answering these, but to make it a little bit more exciting, today I'm going to be doing something which I wanted to do for a long time, and it's an absurd, quite logical thing for me to do, but equally, have you ever tried painting roses red? Because I haven't, and yet it's this archetypal image in Alice in Wonderland, which everyone knows about, but no one's ever really tried painting them, so I'm going to try painting white roses red today. Um, my roses are looking very, oh my goodness, even more sorry for themselves than I thought they did. I ordered myself some roses from a company called Bloom Post, I think. It's like a letterbox flowers thing, and I really wanted some white roses for my bedroom. I love white roses. Oh goodness, I should have done this like a while ago. But because they're on their way out, I thought I could paint them, and it probably would have been better to have done this a few days ago because they are really looking very sorry for themselves and I'm sorry that I didn't do this sooner. But anyway, um, I've got some paint. A million. Okay, here we go. Crimson red. And we've got my paintbrush and... So I'm going to put this back a little bit so you can see. But I'm going to be painting this, as I said, whilst I am answering your questions just to make it a little bit more exciting, you know, because otherwise it's just me talking to the camera and I don't know how much fun that is to watch. Even though, to be fair, I don't know necessarily you like watching people paint things. First question, are you going to get a driver's license? And yes, I really want to. My plan was last year I was going to get it over like the Easter and summer, be practicing for my driving test, but that didn't end up happening because of COVID. And then this year I wanted to do it, um, but I'm not sure again if it's gonna end up happening because of COVID. So fingers crossed, over this summer I'm gonna be able to learn to drive because I really do want to learn to drive now. When I turned 17, I didn't really have any particular need to learn how to drive. I, there wasn't really anywhere I wanted to go. And then like being at university, you don't really need a car at university. I'm making such a mess of this. It didn't seem like anything particularly urgent, but now that I have been at home for like the last year because of the pandemic, I, I really do want to be able to drive for that independence and freedom. What do you do to feel better if you've had a bad day? It depends on what kind of bad day that is. It's like, f for me, if I'm having a bad day, I will go on a walk. It's like the way that I can instantly clear my mind and put things into perspective and my mood will change drastically by the time I get back because whilst I'm on the walk too I'm kind of gearing myself up and becoming excited and thankful and okay I'm gonna go for that oh it goes on very easily very nicely oh I wish that I hadn't waited for these to get like they're kind of like crispy maybe I should take off the, the top layers of these roses and then I'll paint the inside ones so I'll go on a walk, potentially as well, I'll read an old favourite book. Some people aren't really into rereading things before. I've got some, like, people said to me in the past, you know, why do you reread books? Um, for me, it is like, oh, that's much better. Uh, for me, it's like an ultimate act of self-care because I feel so content and, like, safe when I'm reading a, an old favourite book. And so if I'm feeling really bad and... My mental health is in a bad place and that's kind of the my default thing to do because I know that it's going to make me feel better. Comfort reading. Do you ever wish you weren't a YouTuber? That's a really interesting question. Um, there are times where there are aspects of being a YouTuber which are very stressful and where I find it kind of overwhelming. I'll look at a video that I've uploaded and see that it's got like 500 comments and what like over a hundred thousand people have seen it and you like it's sometimes I sometimes distance myself from that and I forget how many people that actually is if you know what I mean so sometimes I kind of feel overwhelmed by it but not necessarily to the extent that I want to kind of not be a youtuber but I do often wonder like kind of how and if I would be different 
if I didn't have a YouTube channel and I hadn't started a YouTube channel. You no, know I gained a lot of confidence from starting my channel. Like if you've been watching my videos and you'll know that when I started my channel, I was being um, I was being bullied. Like I, I I was finding school quite hard and like friendships quite hard, and my confidence had really taken taken that like to to heart really. Like I'd lost a lot of my self confidence, and so YouTube definitely helped bring that back. Oh, look how it coming along quite nicely it's actually quite hard to paint them like that because they're so delicate it feels wrong it feels like you're assaulting them somehow i feel like these rose petals are kind of buckling okay this one wants to come off i think that rose petal what is your favorite outfit to wear i think at the moment it's black trousers from miss patina with this like black jumper top if you could only say one thing to your younger self what would it be and why this is quite funny because i i, I know that somebody is going to comment on the a minor grain of similarity to me saying this like, verbatim quoting but like you need to sort out your priorities i would say to kind of like 12 year old me i was so like i, I thought that so many things were important which weren't important um or not that they weren't important because they were important to me and that it that does count for something but like when I went into GCSEs, I was so scared of getting getting something wrong and of like getting below 90% on a test in my first like few weeks of year 10 where it's okay to not be like scoring really highly and it's okay to not be getting those grades. And yet I was consistently still putting that pressure on myself to get those grades at whatever cost. And I guess I want to tell, I'd want to tell my younger self, put things in perspective and to what extent do you want to get that 90%? It's only a tiny topic test. Is it worth the amount that you're sacrificing? And when I say that, when I say kind of amount that I'm sacrificing, that's not to say that I, people ask me a lot, like, do I regret working as hard as I did at A-level and GCSE? And I don't really, because I did, I did genuinely enjoy it. And it's not like I wasn't enjoying studying, wasn't enjoying doing that work. I think, the thing that I do regret is, but that wasn't always the case, like for the most part that was the case but it wasn't always the case and so I regret the times where I didn't need to do that work but I did it because I was stressed and I like kind of, I felt like I needed to do it when I actually didn't. That's really hard to kind of know as well. I think one thing I've, I've realised is it's really hard to know when you've done enough. Like I fully believe that I could have got the same grades I got at A level and done like 20% of the work that I did, if that. I don't mind having done the extra work because as I say, I enjoyed it. And I feel like I did gain other skills and I feel like I, I did a lot because I learned a lot beyond the curriculum. But I think the thing I potentially do regret is thinking I had to do that much when I didn't, if that makes sense. It's really hard for you to see these roses. Where do you get your clothes? I get this question a lot. Increasingly, I'm trying to buy um, like true vintage and secondhand. Depop and eBay and Vinted are amazing for shopping. Like you can get really great, good quality items, but for a fraction of the price and you're not feeding into fast fashion and like overconsumption, that is the way forward in terms of sustainability. And I don't want to be talking about fast fashion brands or like saying, like mentioning brands which are feeding into this problem because I think like as a quote-unquote influencer like that's not the kind of thing that I should be influencing about that's like a really negative thing to be influencing about so like there are fast fashion brands that I like and will search for on Depop but I won't buy from those brands directly. Do you know what sort of job I want after leaving university? No I don't. This is a constant source of anxiety because I really have no idea what I want to do. Um, I know I want to like potentially do something this is really hard by the way like because there are so many petals and like maybe i should focus on just doing like one rose really well as opposed to going around and doing all of them yeah should i focus on this rose my absolute dream is to be a writer and to make a living somehow through writing whether that's like for competitions as a journalist um a novelist that's the dream um i want to make a living from writing in some capacity that's a really hard part to like choose as a career because it's so uncertain but that is my dream and that's the thing i'm kind of like clinging to i'd love to be a full-time writer um aside from that like i'm potentially considering like working with an, an ngo but i'm not sure <laughs> favorite all-time vegetable peas I think, peas at the moment, or carrots. 
when you graduate or start working, are you continued? Are you going to continue doing YouTube? I, I do think I probably will. Um, I don't know if I'm going to upload with the same consistency, and um, obviously my content will probably change a bit to adapt to the fact that I'm not a student anymore. But I can, I, I can't imagine like fully stopping anytime soon. There will come a point where I'll stop doing YouTube, but at the moment. Like that time isn't isn't quite yet. Also, I'm really sorry because I realise I'm not really looking to camera at all for any of these questions. I'm just looking down at my rose, um, which is going so badly. I'm really bad at painting roses. I've decided. I actually have a lot of respect for how easily and quickly those cards manage to paint those roses. It's actually a lot harder in practice, uh, which is actually partially due to the fact that these are old roses and kind of wilting. But. Do you play any video games? I feel like you would love Animal Crossing. No, I don't. I used to play Sims and really enjoy playing Sims when I was like 14. Also, of course, like, you know, everyone has their Minecraft fi Minecraft phase. And so when I was younger, my cousin's sister and I loved playing Minecraft. Um, but no, at the moment, I don't, I don't play any video games. My sister loves Animal Crossing though. I like looking around her town sometimes, but a Nintendo Switch is very expensive and I know I wouldn't use it enough to make it worthwhile. So <laughs> I'm, not intending on starting playing Animal Crossing anytime soon. Oh, I feel like I should have peeled off more of them, the petals, because the rose looks a lot better on the inside. Maybe I should try another one. Let's like start this one, maybe. Do you ever think about publishing the books that you write? Well, I published one. I published Araminta Parker's to-do list when I was 17. And like so many people were so lovely about it. I still get messages about it today, which is so nice. But I don't like actively speak about it anymore. But I do, I, I would love to publish some of the work that I've written. Let me know in the comments, have you ever tried painting a rose white, uh, red? Is that something you tried when you were a kid? Or like, is it a trend that I completely missed out on? Something that loads of children did that I never did? Let's see how this one goes. It's a kind of falling apart rose. What is my hair care routine? I don't really have a hair care routine. I just use shampoo and conditioner um, and then leave it to dry like I never use a hair dryer or anything. And then brush it in the morning. It's like very, very simple. But I use the Aveda shampoo and conditioner, uh, like the blue Malva one. And my family's been using that like since I was born. So it's the only shampoo I've ever used. Will you do a master's after your degree? Um, I think I will do a master's. Um, I've been talking with my tutors about it over the over this last year and I'm just kind of trying to decide on the master's topic and then obviously choosing the institution based on which uh, master's programme will best accommodate my interests for like if I did at some point want to do a PhD as well. I really can't imagine leaving academics just yet. As I said, I've been talking with my tutors and professors about pursuing it further and getting support with that which is really exciting but I don't know where I'm going to apply yet and I am still kind of torn between three things as to what I want my masters to specifically focus on what do you do on your mental health days or just when you don't like do anything it's, re it's really hard I don't think there are days where anyone does nothing because you always make some kind of decision as to what to what to do with your time and if that is a form of self-care if you're kind of you're taking the day off from like work or something then that still is you still are doing something, you're still being active. So I think you always are doing something, you're always making a decision. I don't think it's a good idea. I really don't like this idea of like saying, oh, I'm wasting time because there isn't really such thing as wasting time. And I think that is like a byproduct of hustle culture more than anything. It's being mindful of how you're using your time. I think that's the important thing. It's not the actual activity which is important. It's like being mindful of how you're using it and being intentional with that. I don't tend to take like proper proper off days i don't know so kind of an on and off day i might do like loads of reading and go on long walks and um like yesterday i took a day off pretty much um and my dad and i went electric biking all day so from like nine or ten until from ten to five which was so nice and changed my outlook and mindset and i came away feeling really good so yeah what do you love most about your life right now I love that it's spring and spring is beautiful and I love that I'm appreciating spring for the first time this year because it was always my least favourite season. I always thought it was kind of boring, like an in-between season where nothing really happens. But I've realised that that's the complete, complete opposite to the reality and that there's so much changing and so, so much happening in spring. And I, I that's because of the pandemic that I've, that I've grown to realise that. But that's something I'm very grateful for, actually, about the pandemic. And so I'm loving that. I'm loving that I'm appreciating little things. I, that's not something, something I've always kind of done, but not to the extent that I'm 
doing it now i feel like i'm just more grateful generally as a person and i am really loving being with my family i'm loving like being able to spend good quality time with my parents and sister that's really important to me like in terms of personal priorities has your dream job evolved over the years funnily enough not really um my ultimate dream has always been to be a writer since i was a, a, a little kid since i was very young actually first of all i wanted to be a photographer actually and then i decided i wanted to be a writer and that's always been something that I've, I've wanted to be, like kind of no matter what other aspirations have come and gone, being a writer has always been the central one. And so, no, my dream job hasn't changed. <laughs> when did you start learning slash, learning about slash liking the Victorian era? Funnily enough, the era I was always really fascinated by was the Edwardian, not the Victorian. So Edwardian is like King Edward in the early 1900s. That's the one I really, really loved. And the Edwardian era I've been fascinated with since I was like seven. The Victorian era, however, I had like a brief period where I really loved it when I was in year six, but then it was something that kind of like, but not not like hugely intensely. And then I'd say maybe from the age of like 15, 16, I started to really, really like the Victorian era. Final one, how do slash did you stop caring what people thought of you? And this is a very big question, very loaded question. Um, and I'm not gonna pretend that I've entirely got that figured out because there are still times where I'm surprised at how much just the idea of what somebody thinks about me will affect my mental well-being and affect the way that I see myself. But for me, it like really started when, I've, I've spoken about this before, I think, but when I was bullied, um, I had this choice between conforming and potentially stopping the bullying that way or resisting and kind of like staying true to kind of what I saw as the core of my identity and like letting the bullying continue if it uh but hoping that it wouldn't so kind of having that like blase attitude and not giving up my identity and i chose the latter and i think by making that choice because i made it as a very conscious choice the negativity and kind of like any kind of meanness no longer seemed to have the same effect on me because I, it was almost like i was making this choice and yes they were attacking parts of my identity I could have felt insecure about that but i was like no i've made the choice to protect this part of my identity and so like the fact that you're pointing that out to me that doesn't offend me because that's not something i'm ashamed of i think really the crux of it is like not is is being proud of certain parts of your identity and being proud of those things that make you different and noticing them, recognizing them, and not shying away from them, like respecting them, respecting yourself. And that way, even when somebody has a negative thought about that aspect, or if they say something to you about it, you need enough enough strength and respect in yourself to like resist that criticism. And that's so much easier said than done because I'd be lying if I said that I didn't read hate comments sometimes and like re like read nasty messages and. Like, of course they get me down sometimes. And of course I I do worry about what people think about me. Um, but that is like, I think that is the solution. And that's what has worked for me largely. Anyway, uh, here is my like kind of badly completed rose, but that was so much harder than I thought it would be. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'm now covered in red paint and I hope that you have a productive I was just scrolling through the rest of these questions and I realised I'd like touched on like comparatively that to that much so I'm so sorry about that. I'm going to quickly fire through a few more because I thought that I'd answered loads but it seems like I hadn't. Okay, what's my MBTI INFJ? What's the first book you remember reading? Properly remember reading, I'm going to say in terms of chapter books, Candy Floss by Jacqueline Wilson I read when I was six and I remember my dad coming home with the book and then reading it for the first time. Are you the only vegan member of your family? Yes, I am, but my sister's vegetarian and my mum and dad are transitioning into veganism or like something similar to veganism um, after watching the Seaspiracy documentary, which you should definitely take a look at. Also, a few people have asked me why I'm vegan and like what my veganism story is, veganism story. I was raised pescatarian and then when I was seven, I found out about fish farms and I thought it was, like I saw pictures and I, uh, if, you've, if you've seen pictures, you know how how horrific it is and I saw these pictures and I was like I can't eat that I can't eat fish so I gave up fish when I was seven and that was actually really hard I remember it being so hard because tuna was my favorite food and I ate so much fish like fish was I, I ate fish for every meal it was my favorite food overnight well, I saw these videos and overnight I gave it up 
my parents weren't happy about that but I was very adamant and then when I was 18 I went vegan and that's basically because at my school there weren't really vegan options and at my school you also weren't allowed to bring a packed lunch in so it wasn't really feasible for me to go vegan before I was 18 but the day I left school I went vegan and I've been vegan ever since. I really thought like it's funny because I thought it would be harder than it is um, and it has been after fish my favorite food became cheese and i like literally added cheese to every single meal like i remember getting told off at school when i was younger because i'd pile cheese on top of like my roast dinner and be told no that's too much cheese but i loved cheese so much like both me and my parents were like how are you gonna give up cheese especially because there aren't really any i don't think there are any really good vegan alternatives to cheese but i don't miss it at all now like i have no cravings for cheese and i'd say kind of like for the first month of going vegan i I really wished I could have cheese but that slowly subsided because there are just so many flavorful vegan options that you can have and with uh, like vegan foods are so prevalent on the market now there are so many options so much to choose from that you don't really like feel like you're missing anything uh, being vegan is like is is really quite easy there are options everywhere as well like delicious cakes and things that you can buy from pretty much any supermarket too and why did I go vegan? Watch the documentary Cowspiracy, that was definitely one of like the starting points in my veganism decision, like my decision towards veganism. Vaguely I'd wanted to go vegan because I had heard like horror stories from dairy farms and battery chickens. For me veganism is like very much linked to kind of like the ethics of the animal and um, like I don't, I don't agree with the act of farming and harvesting animals in that way. But eventually, like really, the main thing was environmental reason. Because of the environmental issues, I can't imagine ever not being vegan now. Like that is definitely the main driving force behind my veganism now. Because of the greenhouse gases and like land that is used to farm um, cattle, like climate change is such a massive issue that reducing our meat and dairy consumption is one of the best things that we can do to reduce our carbon footprint and I'm not gonna sit here and say like oh you have to go vegan you have to stop eating meat like I'm not gonna say that um but I do think it's it's one of those things which like we can all make the decision to like slightly cut down on um how much we're eating like maybe like doing meat-free Mondays if you like you know almond milk then choosing to have that instead of regular milk in your coffee every morning uh, like something really tiny like that which can still make a difference um but I think that's like one of the best ways to approach veganism. My favourite genres for films and books. Favourite books are like reflective books which are very introspective and uh, kind of like focus on domestic life and little occurrences, like real life things as opposed to adventure stories and sci-fi. And I also love classics like Victorians and stuff. Poetry is why I like the romantics. And then for films, I really like uh, films based on people's lives, like historic people's lives. And I also love feel good films like The Greatest Shaman and stuff. Would you consider going into medicine slash natural sciences? No, uh, I used to want to be a doctor when I was in year nine. I was planning on doing all sciences for A-level, but um, I decided to go humanities. Which little woman sister do you relate to most? Jo is my favorite. I'd say like Beth and Jo together. Are you gonna film more Victorian videos? Yes, I am. They'll be uploaded w at least once a month going forward and maybe even like once every fortnight. Uh, they're my favorite videos to film, so I want to make more of them. I like this question. What do you really think about being told that you were born in the wrong century or decade? I really love the Victorian era and I love the Edwardian era, but there are such massive systematic problems that were present in the Victorian period that I wouldn't want to live in the Victorian period. Like as a woman, I wouldn't be able to go to university and I wouldn't have the opportunities that I have whilst living in the world today. Like I don't wish that I'd been born in a different century or a different decade. And I think also there's something quite like I think it's nice for for people to be different, for us not to kind of say like, there are people who fit into this decade and people who fit into this century and people who fit into the modern day because it takes away from us celebrating the differences between all people. I think it's fantastic that we live in a society where there are people with different interests and there always will be people with different interests who are different. I don't know, I think as long as I think it's beside the point to say that you were born in the wrong century because it's a wonderful thing that like if you really love the 90s it's still wonderful that you were born today because you're able to keep that celebration alive like we generalize whole periods don't we like saying it's like you're in the 90s like the 90s is like enca encapsulates so much and it's a massive thing like the victorian period so much changed from year to year it's like it wasn't the same at the beginning to the end of the century bottom line is i don't wish that i'd been born in a different century and 
I don't think we should wish that we were that makes sense anyway i'm actually going to finish the video now because i have answered a few more questions um anyway thank you so much for watching and i hope that you have a productive week Bye.